Hi, we've been welcomed to the home of Jerome Marcus, drummer and percussionist. This is his studio, and we're privileged to have with us top session man Sam Kelly. Welcome. Thank you, Spike. Sam, the uh, book that uh, you've got, Mad, Bad and Dangerous, mm -hmm. which you're uh, about to read, contains several uh, themes, one of which is this notion that drummers might be a little bit mad. What's your take on that? Um, well, God, it's sort of two camps, really. Uh, you, I suppose you have to be a little bit more than a little bit mad to be dealing with <laughs> guitar players and the way they are quite often. Um, on the other hand, you know, um, drumming, I find, kind of turns you into a very sane person because it is so much um, outlet, really, for all that pent-up emotion yeah. and stuff like yeah. that that all of us get. So, yes, I think it, you need to be both. You need to be a little bit of both. Both of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Everett Morton from The Beat learned mm -hmm. to play on uh, metal sheets. Mm -hmm. I learned on pots and pans and upturn mm -hmm. washing up bowls. Did, what, how, how did you start? Unlike a lot of my contemporaries who kind of ended up in, as professional musicians, I never wanted to be a musician. Oh. Yeah, you know, when I came out of school at the 60s, I wanted to be an engineer, which is what uh -huh. I did all this, the stuff at school. Yeah. And, you know, the technical drawing, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted to be an engineer, and I started, I started, I started doing that. But around that time, 16, 17, you know, yeah. we, we tend to be quite angry. Yeah, yeah. Why? And you want to make it? No, we, but we're angry at yeah, something. Yeah. And that's how I started playing John. My, I've got a brother um, who was a percussionist. He's now yeah. a sculptor. And he, he bought a drum kit. Ah. Left it in the basement, got bored with it after a while because it didn't happen for him just like that. And I used to come in, rather than kind of beating up people or having them sort of beaten up, what you're getting in fights and things like this, yeah. I used to come back, go to the basement, yeah. and just beat the hell out of these drums. Right. Not trying to play a pattern, uh, not trying to play them, but it's therapy, just, basically, yeah, yeah. going back to what you... It sounds like the sanest question. thing that you could have done. Yeah, exactly, yeah. so that's what I'm saying to you. It's, um, you know, I've got to fit in both camps. Some drummers I interviewed for this book get this thing which we call the panics. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing a gig, all of a sudden, one can think, what happens if I can't do this all of a sudden? Um, has that ever happened to you? Not exactly what you've described, but something similar, and I think probably every drummer's had this, is you're playing a particular pattern, and you're playing it for quite a long time. Yeah. I was playing 16 notes across this. And you get that muscle here yeah. that decides <laughs> it's going to seize up on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your brain is saying it's okay, but you know you can feel you're getting slower and slower because you're getting cramped. Presumably you have to change what you're doing to, temporarily in order to... Um... It, 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 it not only temporarily, it, it completely changed my way of playing. Yeah. With, the guy I was playing was Roger Chapman. Oh, this yeah, is going yeah. back to like 1984, and it was my first venture into sort of rock and that style of big stuff. Uh, big 25, yeah. 30,000 people playing, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that type setup. And prior to that, Roger um, is not, he's one of the most volatile guys I've ever Yeah, I saw him at that actually at the, the jazz Those cafe days. Yeah, uh, recently, and he's fairly volatile. Well, he well. was even more so then. He? He's, uh, he's probably in his <laughs> nearly 70s now. And uh, not long before that, we were out kind of doing a sound check, um, this German tour, and uh, he kept getting feedback. Yeah. And he turned around to the monitor mix guy and said, sort it. And it didn't, and it came back. Anyway, this went on three times. On the fourth time, he picked up this mic stand, and Roger, at the time, I don't know if he still does it now, but he used to have, you know those kind of cast iron base, the three oh, prong yeah, type the things? Oh, yeah, yeah, really heavy and things. He yeah. this thing up <laughs> <laughs> and launched it at this point. <laughs> sorted it. Yeah, completely, completely sorted it. Well, the thing is, that relates to what, what was happening with me, is I'm finding I'm, I'm getting slower. Yeah, because this this because of this cramp that's going so on. So I'm thinking, okay, this guy could do this to me. <laughs> you <laughs> might get another one. You might so get... what I ended up doing uh, at the time, I ended up working, getting the technique of playing the old left uh, leg doing this, yeah. and gave my arm a chance to rest. So you did that with your foot on the high. You did, yeah, you replaced yeah, the other beats exactly, with the foot on the high hat. Exactly. The cramp helped you to develop it, it, something. It another, developed a whole different style because now my, style. my my part of my kind of playing is, is yeah. now kind of around around the eights or sixteens being played on the on yeah. left foot. Yeah. That leaves my Which arms makes free it, uh, to do all sorts of. I can drive guitar players mad with what <laughs> I can do with it. Because so they yeah. don't seize up anymore. So it, you, yeah. You, you if got, it does, I just stop. And, you know, let yeah. it go on and. 
And it happens all by <laughs> itself. <laughs> these, right? These, I've, I found these in a drawer. Okay, you can't, oh, see, you can't see out of them. I love it. I love you can't <laughs> see out of them. There's no point in them at all, really. But I tell you who um, inspired me to play mm. the drums when I was 11 was Bev Bevan of The Move. Um, like, right. Latterly, yeah. yellow. Mm. But on top of the pops, I was watching it when I was 11, and I was struck by this bloke with these dark glasses behind this drum kit, and I thought, that's, that looks great. You know? so, mm. so I watched Top of the Pops every... Every week after that, looking for these looking dark bit, glasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but, but also got interested in what in the drums. They fascinated me as well. Right. But yeah. Was there anybody that sort of inspired you in that way, or or did sunglasses and things like that? <laughs> 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 uh, well, let's say going back to what we were talking about earlier, on, it, was, it was cheaper than going to a psychiatrist to get myself sorted. Yeah, 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 yeah. To play yeah. drums, but, play the drums. Um, but no, I mean, well, after I'd started playing, I was lucky enough to do a tour in America, and yeah. I was doing the band I was with. We were doing a support um, for Al Green. Oh yeah, at the time, yeah, yeah. and I think Bernard Purdy, if I remember, I think Bernard Purdy was was, was a drummer at the time. To, to show show me what is possible for someone yeah. of, of his stature, yeah, to be watching this very young novice player, yeah, and he watched me for about the first. Four or five days, I could see this man on the side of the stage, and he came over to me and said, "Excuse me, I hope you don't mind me saying this to you, but I've been watching you, and if you try doing this this way, I think you will find it so much easier." Yeah, and I just thought that was the most amazing yeah. thing. Yeah, but that's, that's so the nature of drummers, isn't it? Absolutely. Like me now, I will go to a young drummer. Yeah, and and suggest something to it. You say there's a, there's a fin an affinity there. There definitely is. Yeah, um, yeah, that we just get on. Maybe because we find that when we get to a gig, yeah, and yeah. there's two drummers, it will say, oh, do you want to use this or do you want to use yeah, a part it, of that? You it, normally it? won't get that. With, with guitar well, yeah, with absolutely. Guitar. And I tend to find that guitar players have got no, it's mine, mine, <laughs> mine, mine. mine. <laughs> you can't mine. have it. Yeah. Leave that pedal yeah. alone. <laughs> People used to communicate. Using drums, didn't they, many many years ago, before we could yeah. do anything else? Well, I mean, you, 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 you walk, you, you, for instance, you do a, a little workshop or a session. Uh, uh, children or young people have a choice of instruments. Yeah. Invariably, it's always the drum. Where will they head for? Yeah, always the drum kit. Yeah. Nice natural place for them to go. I mean, I remember um, when I was about 11, 12, perhaps. I had these two bongos, these little bongo drums. Yeah. You, know, you can buy them by the seaside now. Yeah, yeah. And I was just tapping out a very regular, very simple beat. I couldn't play the drum. I never touched a drum kit before. And we had this visitor who used to come quite a lot, an old friend of my mum's. There's an albino chap called, uh, we used to call him Uncle Bob. His name was Robert Eaves. He was right. a brilliant pianist, amongst other things. But he was, he was quite a, a character, and he was nearly blind. And uh, he heard me in the kitchen with these, and he said, Spike, you got it. Spike, that's it, you've got it. I was at the time. I was a bit nervous about whether or not I'd ever be good enough to play the drums. Right, and, uh, right. And uh, once he said that, I thought, right now I know that I can go ahead with it. But he never knew that he actually was the one that gave me the green and light. And it, it stayed with you. He gave me the that? green light, and he he was very much yeah. a rhythm. I mean, he's a piano player. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. in a sense, that's a, 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 a percussive person Absolutely. communicating with another potential percussive that's person, right. saying, yeah. "It's okay. That's yeah. good enough." You know. And you, you, it's like extending that a little bit. I mean, you you, you sort of sit. Uh, in a car, you know, it's raining a little bit, and it's, the old wipers are going. Yeah. And you don't have to be a drum, but you could see people just pick up on that regularity. Yeah, or well, people doing that on the, on the wheel yeah. when they're in a tra traffic jam. They just start drumming. Drummers, but, uh, they'll pick it's up amazing up. how many people actually do sort of play the drums, even if mm. they don't know they're doing it. Yeah. Even if they can't actually, I haven't got the technique, but they're constantly doing something, you know. So, Sam, mm. uh, how about your history? What did, where, you know, who have you played for in the past? And um, oh, wow. Um, I've played for people like Roger Chapman in the 80s. Yeah. Um, I've known Paul Jones, um, the musician, so yeah. the DJ for, for many, many years. Every year he puts on a charity gig yeah. down at Cranley Arts Centre. And he asked me, stroke the band, if we would be the house band over two days. Oh, yeah. I said, yeah, of course. Yeah. He didn't tell us who the artists who were going to be, because he wasn't sure that these people would, had accepted his invitation. Right, so he didn't want to make any promises. And um, Andy Fairweather, Fairweather, Andy Lowe, Fairweather was, was there. Um, uh, Amalda May was there. One of my one of the guys that I've admired for many, many years, Chris Barber, yeah. was yeah. there. Um, and then this, this American guy turned up, really kind of longish hair, and, you know, and it turned out to be Robin Ford. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and they were all just absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, it was it was just absolutely brilliant doing that. Again, so those things that you know, as we go through 
and somebody just plucks you from here and I'm like, yeah, yeah. try this and try that. It's just a nice, it, nice way to do it. Yeah. it keeps it, keeps the flavours going. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Moore was, was one of the really, really nice bonuses being on his, his last, I think it was his last yeah. blues, rhythm and blues album. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant to work with him. Yeah. Oh, right. Shaka Khan, um, yeah. because we knew her sister, um, yeah. Taka, she came along um, on my birthday and, yeah. and sang in a pub. The only lady I know could walk into a pub with a, her own bottle of wine, plonk it on the table and get away with it. And she did. <laughs> um, oh, it's just, it's just That's great. Too, so many names, so many names. One of the uh, nice ones I did with a guy called Gordon, um, Gordon Haskell. Gordon Haskell. Yeah, the, the story on that, very quickly, was that it was going to be, who's going to be number one? Yeah. He was number two, and going through the charts and so on. And the little story on that was, I was doing a little gig out in Dorset somewhere, yeah. and this little old guy came up, to, he was going to be playing in, in between the sets. Came up after the first set, came and said, yeah, I like the way you play, man. Um, I'm going to be doing an album, um, you know, very soon, as soon as I'll get the money together. Uh, I'd like you to play on it. And, and as we do, I think, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not another one. So anyway, I gave him the card. Yeah. And, you know, like, anyway. yeah. anyway, we finally got it, we got it together and we, we went in the studio and did, did the album. And cut the long story short, it was, it, the track got to number, number two. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know who the guy was. Did, yeah. Well, the thing is, one, one of the things, he probably said, Look, if anything happens with this, you know, I'm gonna, I'll make sure you're all right. <laughs> how, many sure times all right. how many times have you heard that? Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? so, yeah. And he did. He signed over a good proportion of the royalties yeah. to myself and the bass player. So basically what I'm saying is that every once in a while the promises yeah, yeah, are yeah. fulfilled yeah. and it does that, you know. You never know what can what, what, what can, can go anywhere. So it, it's it's been it's been really, really good for me. Um again I'm, I'm fumbling around trying Led Zeppelin's lead singer. Robert Robert Plant. Plant. I was doing a, a little jam thing yeah. a while ago, uh, some years ago, and we were down at, remember the old um, Dublin Castle? Yes. Down there. Yeah, and yeah. I was part yeah. of the house band down there, and he came in and, yeah, and saw yeah. me play yeah. down there. And he came up to me at the end and said, um, I like the way you play. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about doing a session. Will you come and do some pre production work for me? Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So th these, th these are the kind of things that's happened to me over, over, over yeah, the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what are you up to now? What, what, what's what's um, happening? I'm playing wise. I'm still playing. I've guys I've been working with for many, many years. Um, um, people like um, Steve Simpson, yeah. Papa George. Um, we're also working with our own bands. Uh, so Jerome and, and Jimmy yeah. and so on. We've got a little reggae thing going called Four Con. Yeah. Don't say that after you've had a couple of pools. <laughs> you know, um, basically, what, what, I've, what I've got is that we have a pool of musicians yeah. that we work with. And we sometimes change the genre, yeah. You know, so it can be funk one day, um, reggae the next day, and so on. Yeah. So, and because at the Horns, you were in a, a funk band, wasn't it? Was it a funk? Oh, band? Or was it I was in actually. I was actually in a tribute band for that one. Oh, it right. was um, the Irishman. Van the Van the Van Band. The man. Van the Band. That's that's. Oh, you were doing that. I was doing that with Martin. And Very same. Roger, Roger. Lewis. Yeah. Roger. Yeah. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. It's a really good chat. Yeah, yeah, for me too. Yeah, I really Super. enjoyed that. <laughs> Tune in next week, folks, for the second part of this interview. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Please, of course, remember to like, subscribe and share with all your friends. Uh, the second part of our chat with Sam, if it's not already up online, will be up soon. And, of course, if you want to watch any of the other videos we've done, just click the More Videos button. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. It'll look lovely this on screen. Real snow. Tell them it's real. <laughs> you cold?